Hi, this is Sholy Physics episode on magnetic field of a moving charge. Today's episode is brought to you by the United States Air Force Space and Missile Museum in Cape Canaveral, Florida. It's a great place to go, especially if you don't have like, you know, National Air and Space Museum. Um, but it's like really close to where all the rockets are launched. And there's a lot of other things that you can see around there, especially in, in the summer in Florida. It's a good time to see some rocket launches. So today's lesson, um, we're looking at the magnetic field that's produced by a, by a moving charge, not just the forces on a moving charge applied by an external magnetic field, but, but now we're gonna look into the magnetic fields that, that's produced by the moving charge. And it's that magnetic field that interacts with external magnetic fields to cause the force. So just to, before I throw anything at you, let's let's go back a little bit and think about electric forces and gravitational forces and their fields that they produce. So you might recall that the electric force is one over four pi epsilon naught, and this would be the, the force between two charges, Q1 and Q2. And uh, just to give a direction, because this is a, a vector, this is in the direction of the radius r. Okay, so let's see that r hat there. So from that force, we get the electric field. If we divide the expression by one of those q's, we get the electric field produced by the other q. So the electric field looks almost the same that same format, which is Q over R squared in the direction of R hat. Okay, so we have that, that format, that form. Then we've got the gravitational force. And what does that start with? That's a, that's a big G, and that's the force between any two masses. It is also in the R direction, but just what's unique about gravity is it's in that negative R direction. It's always a, an attractive force, whereas uh, the electric force can be a, a repelling, like a positive force, or an attracting force, a negative force. Now, that gravitational field is what we call G. Gra you know, little g, 9.8 meters per second squared is the strength of the gravitational, Earth's gravitational field at its surface, and that is G. M. Now that would be like the mass of the planet. So I'll use MP divided by R squared. And if you're at the surface of the planet, that would be the radius of the planet. Um, and that would also be a, in the negative R hat direction. Okay. So there we have the electric force, the electric field, the gravitational force, the gravitational field. So as you see in each one, um, the electric field depends on charge. The gravitational field depends on mass. They also have this inverse square proportionality to the field strength. And the last feature is they each have a constant. Here's the G constant, 6.67 times 10 to negative 11. And over here, um, one over four pi epsilon naught is also called the Coulomb constant. Um, but in terms of the permittivity of free space, epsilon naught, it's one over four pi epsilon naught. So um, what about that magnetic field? It'll have all those forms. Magnetic field is dependent on what? There is no magnetic field from a moving charge unless it's moving and it has to have charge. So there's going to be a, a Q and a V. Just like if we look at the rest of these properties, electric field is produced by a charge. Gravitational field is produced by a mass. A magnetic field is produced by a moving charge. So it has to have both those elements. There will also be a inverse square proportionality to it. So that aspect is there as well. Now, what about direction? Well, will it be in the R direction? Well, you might've gotten a clue that right-hand rule is gonna come into play here. So it's gonna look funky at first, but we're gonna take a V cross R hat. Now don't let that confuse you. We're not plugging in and we're not multiplying by another R up top. This is V cross R gives us the direction 
of the magnetic field force B. All right, and we'll, we'll come back to that uh, momentarily. So we're just if we found the magnitude of the magnetic field, it would be a QV divided by R squared. Then our next step would be to find the, uh, the direction V cross R using the right-hand rule. So the last little aspect we're missing here is that constant. And it turns out um, we're going to have what's called the magnetic constant, or it's also called the permeability of free space. It's kind of like the permittivity of free space, but uh, this, this mu naught is more working with magnetics. So out here, the constant is a mu naught, but we also have a divided by four pi, just like it's very similar to ap for, um, the electric field, is uh, one over four pi epsilon naught. Well, here we have the mu naught divided by four pi. Four pi is still in the, de in the denominator, but here we do have the mu naught in the numerator. So there is this constant in front of the magnetic field. And this is the, the formula we're looking at here. Um, just to rewrite that, we'd have mu naught over four pi times QV cross R hat divided by R squared. And this is the magnetic field produced by a moving charge. All right, so here's, a, here's an example. We'll take a positive proton that's moving with a velocity in this direction. And um, I'm gonna take a magnetic field sensor and I'm gonna orient this so that uh, the magnetic field sensor is pointing up out of the page. There it is. And this uh, proton is gonna be moving by this point here. Okay, so we're gonna look at this location We'll say our magnetic field sensor is uh, a centimeter away, one one hundredth of a meter. The magnetic field measured is two times 10 to the negative 12 Teslas. We're just talking about a tiny proton, one single proton. So it's not gonna be a strong magnetic field. Um, what we're gonna look for is the velocity V of that proton. So we, you know, this might be a practical application if we have a, a stream of protons and we can measure a magnetic field at a certain distance, we might be able to determine their velocity. So it's a good application. All right, so we have the magnetic field. We have Q, the charge of an electron. Sorry, this would be the charge of a proton is the elementary charge, which is positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So we have that value. Got the charge, we're looking for the velocity, and we have the distance r. Now the reason I am orienting the magnetic field sensor like this is because of this v cross r. If v is in this direction, and we're crossing it with r, then the magnetic field produced is going to be, if, if this is V and, and R is coming from uh, from this point um, out to here, this is our, our location of the magnetic field. All right, then there's going to be V cross R. So we're gonna have to orient our hand in uh, the direction of R. So that's gonna be this way. So that means there's going to be a magnetic field down, down into that magnetic field sensor. It's hard to see with my big hairy hand, but um, it would be down. Try out your uh, V cross R. There's our R. Direction of R is right there. Okay. And that would give us a down um, magnetic field direction at that point. Okay. So we know, uh, go ahead and write that direction is down into that field sensor. All right, so let's write it out. Actually, I've got it above. I'm not gonna bother writing it out. Let's plug in our values. So now we get to, to mu naught. I didn't actually identify what that value is. Strangely enough, it measures out to be at least out to nine decimal places. 
equal to 4 pi. 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. Yeah, kind of weird, but that's what it turns out to be. 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. So by dividing by 4 pi, we're really just multiplying this number by 10 to the negative 7. Um, just a little offshoot factoid here. There's this really neat relationship between epsilon naught and u naught, the the electricity or the electric constant and the magnetic constant. And um, it turns out that they're both related to the speed of light. The product of the two, if we take the um, square root, the inverse square root of the product, it equals the speed of light. It's pretty incredible. That means the electric field and magnetic field produced by a moving charge has something to do with light, electromagnetic radiation. You might start to see where those words are, are relating to each other. So if we do square both sides, you do end up with uh, C squared equals 1 over epsilon naught mu naught. Okay. And of course, you know, if you ever heard of C squared before, you might uh, recognize it from Einstein's awesome um, expression he came up with but uh, those two are related and that's why we're, we're drawing them into these field strengths up here the mu naught and the epsilon naught um, right here and here and here so for the electric field and the magnetic field that's why we're using those constants is if you build off and you, you build up past this course past the reaches of this course you're going to encounter mu naught and epsilon naught in terms of C, the speed of light. So coming back to it, we're going to have a mu naught over 4 pi times QV cross R. So we're going to have a 1.6 times to the negative 19 times the velocity V divided by R squared. Um, and our R is 0, 0.01 square that. Now uh, since this is a vector, we're going to have this um, into the page, down into the page. So we're going to remember that bit. So finally plugging in the value of uh, 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 and multiplying by these characters, we need to set that equal to the magnetic field, which is measured here to times 10 to the negative 12. And that would be uh, Weber's. I'm sorry, not Weber's. Weber's is flux. Um, Tesla's. 2 times 10 to the negative 12 Tesla's. Whew, not going through my mind. All right, so when you work this out, you, you'll get a velocity V of 1.25 times 10 to the 4 meters per second. So 12,500 meters per second. Or 12 and a half kilometers per second is the speed of that proton. So not quite close to the speed of light um, matter or significant mass. And in terms of the speed of light, the mass of a proton is kind of significant. Um, you get down to one ten thousandth of that, an electron, you can get up close to the speed of light. Um, but that's uh, really reasonable for that. All right, so 1.25 times 10 to the fourth meter per second, there's an application. Um, please work with that right hand rule. Think of your V's and R's. That's going to give you the direction. So uh, getting back to this creature here, you'll notice I didn't multiply by R in the numerator. This is just a V cross R. The, the V is the magnitude, so that does get multiplied times Q. But this is an R hat. What this does, this creature does, is give us the, um, the direction. Okay. So we're going to take the V cross whichever direction the R is. Where direction your thumb's facing, that's the direction of that magnetic field due to the moving charge. And that brings us to the end of this segment.